What's so guys, this is Shannon and today we are at the Park Sky Bukit Jalil. Let's go! Okay, now I'm at commercial areas at uh, Taman Esplanade and a lot of people have never seen this part of Bukit Jalil before. Taman Esplanade is a place in between IMU and Jalil Link, the main street of uh, Bukit Jalil. Lah. So you have the street pedaling, then you have the LRT station as well. And the landed properties here also like quite atas. Lah, nah. And those used to be the days right where rumors Andy Lau's house is around here. Last time right, dulu dulu lah. Okay? And one way for me to gauge like the affordability or the expenses here right is by going to the food stall and I'll order some standard drink with that kopi peng everywhere. The kopi peng here is like 40 cents more expensive than those in Puchong Jaya which is like 10 minutes away. So the kopi tiam here and the kopi tiam in Puchong Jaya has a difference already in the price index of their beverage and stuff like that. So that kind of indicates the net income for people around this area. Lah. So that's my pasal malam way. Lah. <laughs> So you can see that's the Park Sky residence, right? So those are the four blocks and you have a row of offices and retails where you come and see uh, some PDM, some studios, some dentists around and right behind this block is already the existing commercial areas that we have visited before. I can just put the link down here and the exciting thing is the Pavilion 2. They call it Pavilion Bukit Jalil. It's going to be up and running pretty soon as well. Not only that, behind is Pavilion. In front, you have this amazing park. For you to just chill and walk around, very, very nice. Okay, so let's go inside. Now we are in the car park and it's an elevated one. So you've got more air and stuff like that. It's, it feels way better. And I enjoy the architectural treatments lah. so louvers like this right really adds character from afar from the facade it looks a little bit more expensive and next to this right these are the retail shops really that we have reviewed before so it's pretty convenient lah. and if you look into the car park structures i think it's also very neat to give compliments as well they put all the handicaps uh, parking closest to the entrance lah because of this glass they even put steel beams like this steel columns not beams columns so the lift lobby is in a linear form there are four lifts and that's us now yeah so human height not bad when i check out the lobby it's like a hotel lobby you look at the ceiling Oof. then you have water features at the side to welcome you back It's not as high, I think it's like 2.8 meters only with the plaster ceiling and all but with this stretch of windows right and the layout that actually spreads throughout left and right wing that gives you this opening of facade captures all the light into the corridor so it feels kind of good that when you come out of the lift right the first thing you see is outside the only thing right I felt that a bit sayang is at this junction of the corridor it's rather dark and you have a unit here so you can see it's fully dependent on artificial lighting just to line up this space. This is the condition of 12 o'clock. On the lift lobby, there are corners like this heading to your unit. So there's a foyer here. And this is the main unit. This is the studio unit. Five square feet unit, uh, three plus one bedroom, three plus one bathroom, and we are now in this amazing space of the living and dining. And you can see the ceiling height, right? That 3.3 meter ceiling height is just amazing. If you can see this ceiling drop here, this is around 2.6 meters, this is 3.3 meters, right? And you can see that drastic two feet drop created this space to be more significant. Imagine having conversation with your family in your dining or living, right? next to a view like this so this is the Bukit Jalil Park where it's all green and there's certain design to it and this is a public park so that's Hijawan and right behind that is the Berjaya Golf Course already but before we move on further right, because this layout is a bit too big lah. <laughs> so this is the entrance and we are in a mirror unit lah. so everything you see is mirrored over but what you can see is the clear designation of splitting the unit into half where this half 
is your living, your dining, then you have your workspace, your back of house. They locate all of that away from the bedrooms. So you can see you have one bedroom here, two, three, and this for your area allows you to actually treat it like a studio unit as well. So you can actually rent out this unit. So it's when you come in, all this side is the living dining kitchen. This side are the private spaces. And let's check out this amazing dry kitchen first. So all these are provided by the developer. Ample amount of space, just that there's no basin to it. Uh, most likely, right, they will design this to be an island. And I think it's very workable, so your island might kind of have the water basin or whatsoever, but you cannot find the water point. Hmm. If you have a breakfast station here, because you have that ample amount of space, sweet, right? Because this unit is still under progress by the makeover guys and I just hijack their unit and come and review lah, right? So this is the wet kitchen. Look at the scale of it, the L shape. This is where you squeeze your washer dryer here and this will be your working space lah. And your hood and hop by Electrolux, uh, four burner. On the normal smaller units, it's actually two burners but big units like this, you've got more family members. Lots of space, nice. And this is the plus one room that we talked about just now. Right, so this is the maid's bathroom and this will be the maid's room. Coming out from the kitchen, uh, let's go check out the balcony. And a lot of people will tell me always that, Hey Sean, Bukit Jalil a bit congested already, or a bit packed already. Or. Yeah, so but you see, got me? <laughs> no lah, so actually right, uh, what I realized because I actually invested in the unit around there. Generally, uh, Bukit Jalil is divided into three main areas. One is the station Muhiba side where you have Z residence, you have rains, you have Casa Green. Then the other side will be stadium. That's the stadium really, right? So you have the Savannah, you have the IMUs, right? So IMUs around there. So you have the Commonwealth, the Star Commonwealth. And you have trees and that's the AFC football club. So there will be two orientations to this. One is this amazing park view and the golf course. But the other side is actually pavilion with him. So steel handrail, right? Oh, you see two layers, right? You see? Two layers, right? Ah, solid stuff. And then you have this drain, right? To actually drain out the rainwater. You're not sure flooded one. And the floor trap, it looks like this. That's pretty cool. And for ease of maintenance, uh, they actually use spray paint. As you can see, the textures here, right? It kind of weathers the weather. Weather's the weather, correct? Right? Weather's the weather a bit better. Weather's the weather. So the transition from house to timber floor, laminated timber. And it's actually divided by this metal thing. Lah. Then you will have the toilet. Ooh, nice. Bravat basin. Bravan WC, fully tiled up walls, water heater, everything. Lah. Very nice. They even give this though. And you have these slight details here, right? That can be rather useful. You can just put the bottles of shampoo here. You know what you're gonna do? You're gonna put the triangle one, right? Then you put all here, then you need to drill hole, then I worry I drill hole will crack. <sighs> So I actually do like developers like that provide everything, especially the toilet. Like, the more fully furnished is it, right? The more I appreciate. Because toilet is one of the very dangerous or high risk area for you to drill. Later got water pipe there. So you also have a kids friendly height on your switches and that is the bedroom. Okay. So they will share the same view as the living room, which is the park view. Ooh. Nice. From this bedroom, we move on to the next bedroom. And I think this will be the master bedroom. First thing I like is actually that detail. This is what we call kicker. So instead of the window directly connecting to the floor, uh, that always have a water seepage problem. When it's raining and wind blows into the unit direction, right? So water will actually seep through. So if they use this kind of joint, it actually prevents that. And it's also for safety, la, so you're not so worried when you move stuff. And also this master bedroom will have the same view of the park. Just imagine waking up to this. Uh. Then you can check. Max have we got jam or not? <laughs> so you have the king size bed, your wardrobe, right? Check out the ceiling height. 
So this unit, right, I've just checked some sub-sales in the property portals. It's going for around 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 also got. And the rental is going for bare unit, it's like 3,000, but fully furnished, you can go up to 5,000. Or you can actually choose to rent out separately. You can stay the main unit and you rent out the plus one unit. The best thing is that all rooms is an uh, ensuite. So let's also check out the bathroom. Ta-da! Wait, too dark. Okay, ta-da! And I really like how wide it is. Though. After you put your leg, right, you can still have another one. Six to 700 mm here. You know. Coming out from the master bedroom, you can actually just walk out right to the foyer space and then you have your extra plus one studio already. Here you have your pantry, you have your bathroom as well. Again, the similar treatments. I like it, I really do. And this is your bachelor bed. <laughs> I think this layout is pretty much like a hotel layout. Your queen size bed, a lot of extra space. You can even put your work desk here. And the view. So those are the shop lots below. Yeah, nothing much though. So what is very attractive here is you have a lot of tertiary educations where like my wife, she studies in INU here. She graduates there. Then you have Arpit as well. And in this location, easily within eyesight, you can already see Max Highway, Kersas Highway, the Seremban KL Highway. LDP Highway and let's move on to mall to have the Pavilion Mall then you can go down further to Puchong is the IOI Mall you can go down a little bit further you have Summit Pyramid you can turn right you can go Mid Valley and if you prefer some local down to earth uh, food like myself right you can go to Puchong, Sri Patani, Oyuji and complement by the abundance of LRT stations so you just check around here right? you have the Sutra station you have the Kinara 13 station you have the Sri Pataling station, you have the Muhi Bar station. Well, a lot, just like in this one or two kilometers radius, right? You have like four to five stations already, and that is pretty rare. And in this project, I just really enjoy the amount and sense of space that you get. Open the window only, all greens. So, I think that's all for the unit. Let's go to the facility deck. But before that, so this is the refuse two layer doors. I like it. And this seems to be the refuse chamber. Let's go facility. You can see you have some seating place and you're welcomed by a pool. They create a lot of plastic space that allows people to actually just walk around, play around. I think it's pretty fun to see the team all just walks around. Wow, so hammock like this. Pretty functional. Surrounded by landscape and it's going to rain, so that's why it's getting windy already. You have this meeting room. I think it's ready with furniture and all. Then islands of structures. This facility deck, right, is very extensive in terms of expressions. Like. So if you look into the bench, the water features, the ID inside, and how they design you to walk, they can make you hop around, or they can make you walk in a certain organic manner to slow down your pace. You have water features like this, and pavilions like this. You have such a scale of corridor, and just imagine if your kids were they would just go insane. So I guess that's about it. For this round, uh, let's go to the Sean Take 3 on 3. Three things I really like, number one would actually be the location. From accessibility point of view, you have all the highways that we mentioned just now. From LRT point of view, you have a lot of stops within this one kilometer radius. Then in terms of amenities, you have the schools, a lot of local school here, a lot of tertiary education facilities here. You have the stadium, you have the park, you have the mall right in your face. Number two, what I like is the very detailed touches right that is very designed areas like this where you have a lot of pebble stone although it's just one space uh, but you can see the amount of effort and if you look into the external wall the spray paint textures right there are sometimes we take for granted as well as the outlines of forms in the common areas i think that really makes a difference especially in the swimming pool so on a normal swimming pool you like square square rectangular olympic size cow team but this one they take a very different approach where they actually gives you some organic forms that kind of like a bit more artsy right that that i really really enjoy last of all i really like the unit layout it's a very clear open space and uh, private spaces so all the bedrooms are tucked in one side because of that ceiling height difference 
the kitchen area where you have that 2.6 right and that 3.5 3.3 to 3.5 meters right, that drastic change in level actually gives that dramatic effect and I like the floor to ceiling height open window throughout the main wall and then also the toilets they really complete everything in the toilet itself the three things I don't really like number one is actually the corridor right, because it's actually winked in a angle so at that junction and corner right sometimes when you walk just now <laughs> With the team as well, we like shock each other because it's at a corner. At that corner especially, right, it's kind of dark. They really need to on the artificial light all the time. Lah. Number two would be that the short-term condition of the road currently because everything is still ongoing. The infrastructure is not ready just yet. Everything is still ongoing where you have a lot of congestion to the Astro office side or to Puchong side, right? No joke. And last of all, if you were to really calculate the numbers of unit within this proximity, like easily few thousand units in Bukit Jalil itself. But if you really look into it, right? Yes and no. Like. As we explained just now, if you look into the Mugiba, uh, Z resident side, right? It's there, the price per square feet is actually different. That's why the density is also different. This side, the price per square feet is actually different. Where you can see Skylux in comparison to this one. So this side, they enjoy the open park in this side. So you can't get really as dense. Can be in a concern for people as well. It's the opposite side where you have a lot of brown development land. You don't know what is it yet. I think that's all for this episode. Uh, because I've also bought a unit which is like a stone throw away only. Check out this city, it's so cool, right? Thank you very much for watching and if you really like this video, like it, share it and even subscribe for more information like this. Uh, this is an area where I'm going to call my future home. And see you guys on the next one. Ciao!